Good afternoon. Part three of this uh, tale of the insignia. Um, today I'm going to be reassembling it, uh, putting the cams back in, putting the time belt back on, and then at the very end I'm going to be doing the tests that I did prior to dismantling it. I'll be taking a, a capture of the in cylinder waveform using the picoscope with the WPS pressure transducer and I'll also be using a diagnostic tool to actually measure the mass airflow against the, the actual mass airflow against the, the requested mass airflow. And what I'm hoping is that that airflow is going to be in line with each other. So we're going to have whatever the ECU is expecting to see, it's going to be seen. Uh, and that PICO waveform is going to be a textbook PICO waveform. So um, this video I think will be a bit quicker than the rest of them. Um, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to video everything of the, of the reassembly. I'll, I'll basically just video the key points. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. If there's any questions you have about this car, feel free to comment on the video or send me a message. Okay, I'm ready to put this back together now. Uh, because I've had the bolts in this end out, they are stretch bolts, so new bolts to go in. So they're going to go in place of the old ones. Some there. Old ones, new ones. I'm not going to talk them up at this point because I'm going to end up fighting with it, trying to talk them down. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to put it, bolt it to the top of the engine and then talk it up once it's uh, once it's on the engine, so that the, using the engine as a vice, basically, you clamp it down. Number two there. The manufacturer specifies that you change a bolt, you change a bolt. There's a reason why, and it's usually because the bolts are stretch bolts, so once you've torqued them, loosened them and re them again, you're going to fatigue them. So those bolts there can go in the big box of bolts, which I call the kit car fund. So they're in finger tight there now, so it's ready to place back on the top of the engine. Uh, another, another point just to make at the minute, I've taken the, the bottom pulley off the crankshaft because these engines have a, a really bad um, habit of this keyway. You can see it there keyway failing on the on the bottom pulley and the bottom pulley will actually spin on the end of the crankshaft and because we time the engine up from this pulley if the crankshaft spun inside of there when you when you put the timing tools on you're not actually timing the engine up so I took the bottom pulley off and as you can see this one is absolutely a-okay so that's getting replaced and again it's getting replaced with a new bolt as well um, so it's now time to put it back on the engine. As you can see, I've got it all tight. I've got it pinned up. I've got the pin in the exhaust cam and I've got the pin in the, in the inlet cam and I've got those pins located. What I'm gonna do just to show you where they're located into, I'll wind them out for now and turn the camshafts. on the cams themselves so as you can see those pins locate into those pegs there like so but they're bolted in through the side of the, the cam house there you have it there the pins are located in here and in here and I can't 
turn this cam. So this, these camshafts are now locked up and ready to install. By the way, like the new sweater, diesel dot to one side, intelligent auto the other side. Give the intelligent auto page a like and the diesel doctor page a like. Right, there we are, we're going to put this crank sprocket back on again. As you can see the keyway is pointing at roughly 12 o'clock there, um, where it should be. People are saying no, it's five past, it's not there. And orientation of the engine is that way a bit, the engine doesn't sit straight up and down. So that goes on to there like so, and a new bolt. New bolt, old spacer that goes in there. It's a dry fit. Oh, sorry, left hand thread as well. <laughs> I'm just going to put this in finger tight for now. And we'll torque that up later because I need to lock the flywheel to torque it up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to install the locking tool once again, which Okay, it's onto there, and as you can see, we're a little bit out of line there, so have a look, see, that we're in there now, that bolt goes in there to hold that crank in place for when we install the belt, so basically that crank, that's locked onto a, a remover, if you remember, I removed a bolt out the off front, the oil pump, and put this tool in, which has got a, a dowel on the end of it, for that tool to lock onto. Underneath that hole there, there's actually a nipple on the on the crank pulley, which that locates onto. There's my nice new heater kicking in. Uh, we've got heat in the workshop now, ready for winter. And then I've put a one bolt in the in the um, locking tool to locate it all up. So now that I know that this engine is set, the crankshaft's set, it's locked, the cams are set, it's locked, it's safe to put that cam box back onto the top of the engine. There we go, uh, as we left it apart from, I'll give the surfaces a quick clean off. Uh, I've had all of the hydraulic lifters out to make sure none of them have collapsed and they haven't. And I've checked the condition of each roller bearing as well to make sure there's no flare clearing. I'm happy that they're okay so new gaskets to fit um, I wasn't going to chance the old gasket when I take when I took this apart there was oil down the injector hole so I can only assume that the gasket had failed around the injector ports so that goes onto there like that locates onto a dowel on each corner here and now I'm ready to place the cam box back on here she goes Get it back on. I'm going to retrieve the bolts now and put the bolts back in. There's a few different bolt lengths, uh, so I've just lined them all up, up over on the bench there in a different length. And now I just need to identify what goes where. Uh, one, the longest one, I think it goes in there. I'm going to put these in finger tight now and make sure they've put down that shoulder. We've got five, but the shorter ones, which they go in the valley. The last few to go in are the, the medium sized ones, they're ones, they the ones that go around the edges. Again, I'm not talking these down, I'm literally just running them up to the shoulders, make sure there's nothing in the holes. That's going to stop them winding in. The last thing I want to do is wind the bloody things in and then uh, pull some threads out the head. Right, they're all wound in, so I'm now going to 
first off, pull them down in sequence. Small ratchet, I can't, I can't apply too much force with a small ratchet. I think it's now it's time to crack open the torque wrench, so I need to find the torque setting for these. Right, I've got the torque wrench ready. Let's set it. You can see that, 25 Newton meters, which is the spec for these. And basically, we're going to torque these in a circular fashion, starting from the middle, working outwards. Here, the torque wrench beeps, and also vibrates. You don't have to be pulled down that hard. I've seen people gunning these down. If you notice. I'm in my shirt sleeve now because my new heat is so good. Keeps the place lovely. Right, that's those torqued. So next, I need to torque the two bolts that I put into the end of the camshaft. The torque spec for these two here is 40 Newton meters, and then there's a, then there's an angle to put on them as well of 55 degrees. So I'm going to set the wrench up. The angle there, you can see that 55 degrees. Again, the wrench will measure this for us. It's a digital wrench, so it'll measure the angle and it will beep and vibrate when I hit it. tight I'll tell you there we go if anybody's interested in why we have angles for torque uh, instead of just straight torque settings uh, keep an eye out I'll do a video explaining why uh, at a later date keep an eye out for that one right that's everything back in place, everything's torqued. Um, the next thing to do, I think, is for me to put the belt back on before I start building everything up. And then I can turn the engine and make sure that there's no interference between the camshafts or the, between the valves and the pistons before I start putting everything else in place. So I've got the belt on now, as you can see, I'm a, uh, locked up on the crankshaft. There's a mark on the cam here. There's a bit of tipex on the edge of the belt there, which lines up with the stripe. This belt is literally a few hundred miles old. I'm not going to replace it. Um, point of interest here, a lot of common rail systems, a timing mark, it's going to focus. There you go, see there's a timing mark on the pump sprocket. Now, there's a, a myth in the motor trade saying that common rail pumps don't need to be timed. Strictly speaking, no, they don't, but they need to be phased. Basically, this is a, a three piston pump. So it's basically, it's got three cylinders within it. It's got three uh, phases. Um, so 
the, the fuel pressure coming from it is never ever going to be perfectly even. It's going to pulse because of the three pistons within the pump. Um, and this is why you time them. So that mark there lines up with a, you can see there's a stripe on the belt there. And the reason being, if you look at the size of the pulley in relation to the size of the cam pulley, in relation to the size of the crank pulley, basically it's geared so that when it's coming up on a, on a, on a, on a high pressure phase, so one of, one of the pistons in the pump is, is coming to the top where it's creating its biggest pressure, also one of the cylinders is coming up to its injection phase. So this is why you should time them. They'll still run if they're not timed, but what they'll never ever do is achieve maximum pressure. On a vehicle of this age, probably wouldn't have logged a fault for it unless the injection system was a bit worn and it was having a real negative effect on pressure. But on newer stuff especially, it does matter. It, 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 it will, the, the ECU will pick this up because the, the real pressure sensors are so sensitive. So just a, a point of interest there where I was fitting the belt. So here we are, back where we started. Everything's reassembled. I've left the injectors unplugged here because we'll go, I've got the pressure transducer back into cylinder three to take that pressure waveform so we can then compare the two waveforms from before and after. If you notice, I've left the lambda sensor out. Reason being is this, this it's got a block DBF off running like a pig for so long. So I'm, I'm trying to give it its best chance uh, for the exhaust gases exiting the engine. So I'm gonna put you on the camera stand and we're gonna have a look at this scope trace. When I crank it over. So the scope's running. Let's uh, give it a crank. Let's just go back the screen and zoom in on one of those. Now that's what an in-cylinder waveform on a diesel engine should look like when the timing's right. And if we look now also as well, compressions now at 21 bar, they were at in the mid-teens, I believe, last time. Nothing going on around here when the exhaust valves were opening. What I'll do is I'll uh, I will put both traces side by side in the in the video so you can see the difference. So basically, that's that's top dead center on an exhaust stroke. This is the piston heading down, and we, we had a dip here where the inlet valves weren't opening. So I'm going to save that. Is a good one. Get this running and we'll take a measurement of airflow next. There'll be a load of faults stored in this when I when I open it up because I've had stuff unplugged when I was um, testing originally. I haven't cleared them faults out. So what, I'll go, what I'm going to do is I'll clear those faults out just to show to you that there's uh, nothing left unplugged on the engine which could uh, affect the airflow. This was the fault that we were getting before P2282. I'm going to delete everything. Should come back as memory, memory was deleted. Yeah, no errors. So we'll get the airflow reading up now, the actual and the desired. Start this up. There we 
we go. The top one is the actual, the bottom one is the desired. The airflow is actually slightly higher than what it's requesting, um, which beforehand it was certainly the latter. There we go, EGR valves just opened, so they're coming into the line now. So I'm going to call that a fix. Um, poor engine time, and that's all it was, but poor man. You end up pulling out for a turbocharger, a DPF and an airflow meter, as well as oh, well, all of the time that the car's been off the road as well. So this car's now going to get the DPF clean. Um, that'll be tomorrow and it'll be road tested and I'm hopefully going to be handing the car back to the man tomorrow night. So the uh plot thickens with this insignia. See, I've tried out on test drive and I found that it, uh, a couple of, um, well, it done the regeneration, uh, was, was kind of textbook, went through regen, no problem. Um, on the drive back, I kind of took it off the motorway and brought it back on the back road to, so I could be up and down the gears, chain, uh, just to basically check that the, the thing was running okay and it was fine until I come up with slip road, come back on the motorway and it dropped into limp and it uh, logged no boost fault. So I brought it back to the garage, I've, uh, I basically I, I, can, I can make it do the over boost fault, it is, it's, it's going to about 3 bar, well I think the the map sensor can only read up to 3 bar so it's hitting, it's hitting maximum um, boost so it's the turbocharger control side which, which I'm looking at. I'm just going to zoom in on what I'm looking at here and uh, as you can see uh, I've got some data pins up here just to boost pressure and whatever. What I've found is that the variable wastegate on this turbo has got a position sensor on it and I seem to be having an issue with its position sensor. I'm not going to go into the walls the and my fours. I have got attached to the turbocharger a midivac. Um, I'm just going to zoom this back out again. So I've got a Mitivac attached to the turbocharger. So as I vacuum this turbocharger, basically there's no change in position. Yeah, so what I'll do is I've put it up on a, on a graph there. Um, the red line is the turbo position sensor signal and the blue line is the, is the percentage actual value. Um, I'm going to do is I've got the midi back. I'll just zoom you in, and you'll see uh, as I'm applying vacuum, you can see the needle pulling round. There's no change in the position sensor feedback, so the voltage is stuck at 2.27 volts, and the percentage is stuck at 41.2 percent. And that doesn't matter whether I release the vacuum from the system. Or I increase the vacuum on the on the actuator, it stays exactly the same. Now I'm just going to take it off the stand and show you that there's the the wastegate arm there, and as I am backing this down, you should be able to see the arm moving and when I release it it moves back up so the arm is moving there's nothing mechanically wrong with the actuator basically we've got a problem with the position sensor so back up on the stand so what I've done is I have hooked up a multimeter to check and I've got that multimeter back probed into the back of the position sensor plug on the signal wire and as you can see it's reading the same voltage as what's read at the, at the ECU which is 2.2 odd volts and as you can see as I back this down the voltage on the multimeter is not changing, so it's not a wiring issue. It's not a communication issue between the actuator and the and the ECU. So 
What I thought I'd do is, using this thing here, which is called an AutoSim Pro, which is a sensor simulator, I can actually push a voltage down this Plug it first. So I've unplugged that as you can see, the voltage has dropped here. Um, so I've unplugged it because the voltage has dropped to zero volts. So what I'm going to do is put my auto sim onto the plug. And I'm going to zoom you in here so get the auto sim in shot at the same time as you can see I've got a, I've got a set of 3.3 volts so if I switch that on as you can see the voltage is rose on the component and as I switch that off The voltage drops, I'll change that voltage, I'll change it to 2.7 volts and I'm going to switch it on. And as you can see it switches on and I'm going to switch it off and as you can see it switches off and I'll put that up to 4.3 volts there now. Focus in. I'll switch that on as you can see the voltage rising again here so what that proves is that the wiring between the turbo actuator and the engine ECU is perfectly good because whatever our voltage I push down the wire using this is reflected by the output here which is basically the, the voltage that the ECU is reading so um, the, only, the only component that can be at fault is the the turbo actuator or, or the position sensor which is built on the turbo actuator like I said before with this this car had <laughs> it's, had a, it's had an air mass meter it's had a turbo and it's had a DPF to try and fix the timing issue that are fixed. Um, so the, the, the air mass meter that was fitted is a non-genuine one, which I'm, 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 I'm still going to hang a question mark over whether it's going to be how long it's going to last. The DPF is a non-genuine one, which certainly I guarantee there's going to be DPF problems with this vehicle in, in, its, in its future. And now, now the, the, the turbocharger that was fitted has obviously been the cheapest one that we find with the cheapest actuator on so uh, the position sensor on the actuator is not working so not not ended yet uh, I've ordered a new um, actuator for this turbo um, I'm going to fit the new actuator and I'm pretty sure that that's going to be the end of the problems with this car for now anyway until this this aftermarket DPF or this aftermarket um, mass airflow sensor start to act up I'm sure so uh, yeah um, so yeah, we're getting there. I've spoken to the guy here who owned the car. He's, he's basically he's got it about it, but anyway, it is what it is. Uh, it needs fixing. So uh, I just thought I would uh, keep you in the picture on this one. Uh, it's not over yet. Thanks for watching.